Today we attempt to demystify the elusive yeast. As always, we like to start brew talks with some questions. And today is no different. Our first question comes from Jeffrey Henson. Trying to start brewing, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around a couple of things. First, what's the major difference between putting your flavorings in such cherries, strawberries, etc., in with the brew initially, letting it ferment with the brew and back sweetening? That's a different show. Is one better than the other? Again, different show. Secondly, which yeast is best for a sweeter, less dry mead? See, now we're talking. I've heard champagne yeast mentioned in several groups and circles, as well as bread yeast, but I'm uncertain. Thanks for all the great fits. Okay, that's a really good question. What is the best yeast for a sweeter, less dry mead? Well, any of them. Certainly not champagne yeast. Though. Any of them. Nope, you can make a sweeter, less dry uh, mead with champagne yeast, too. That's true. That's true. Here's the truth about yeast. There's no such thing as a sweet yeast or a dry yeast. They all do the same thing to lesser or varying degrees, okay? All yeast consumes sugars and converts them into carbon dioxide, a million other gases, and alcohol, okay? Yeast are trained or grown, hybridized, whatever you want to call it, to go to a certain alcohol tolerance. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it's 12, 14, 18. In the case of champagne yeast, it's about 18%. Bread yeast, depends on the bread yeast. We use Fleischmann's. Other ones like Red Star, I have heard 3%, 5%, 10%, 15%. Fleischmann's, generally between 12 and 14%. Comes out, I, it just does. It doesn't attenuate as nicely as other yeasts, but hey, if that's what you got, that's what you use and it works. But, what does that mean? That means if you put in the right amount of sugars, in theory, you can make a sweet mead with a dry wine yeast or a dry dry mead with a sweet wine yeast, depending on the amount of sugar. So you just want to make sure that there's enough sugar to get past the tolerance of the yeast. Or you can let it go dry and keep step feeding it until it eventually just won't take anymore and go sweet. Simple. Easy to do, right? We'll get into yeast in a few minutes, though. Too Morbid. Well, that's an unfortunate name. Really want to try making this, but unsure what yeast I should use. Would Garvin Cider Yeast work? Now, I didn't take note of which video this was on because it doesn't matter. This question is representative of the millions of questions that we get every day. I'm just joking. We don't get a million questions a day. <laughs> but I've probably been asked this question a thousand times. What yeast should I use? Would this yeast work? Okay, in most cases, my answer is yes, it should work. Will it do what you want? I don't know. This one, Gervin Cider Yeast. Never heard of it. Never used it. Don't know anything about it. And here's the truth about yeast. There are thousands of yeasts on the market today. Thousands. If someone says they've used them all, they either probably own a commercial brewery and just have stupid godly amounts of money to spend on things, or they're lying to you. One of the two. <laughs> Most people in their lifetime will find three to five yeasts, use those forever, and adapt to the, what they do and use those, and that's it. Um, but something, something I want to do is we're going to talk about yeast that we use. That's my favorite part of this whole show, right there. Okay, so let's start with the simple stuff, okay? Bread yeast. Like I said, we use Fleischmann's, and we use Fleischmann's Active Dry. It comes in a bottle about like this. It also comes in small packets. Yeah, it makes bread, and it's made to make bread, and it does a very, very good job of that. The difference between a bread yeast and a wine yeast is not even the type of yeast. They're all Saccharomyces. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. They're all the same strain. Derica said in a previous video, it's kind of like dogs. They're all canines, but they're all bred to do a slightly different thing. Beautiful analogy. I still love that. Anyway, so the Fleischmann's yeast, in my opinion, is just as good as using like a D47 or something like that for most wines and meads that you want in the 12% range, especially if you want them to be a little bit sweet. We found that the Fleischmann's yeast brings out a lot of flavors in wines and fruity things that maybe the D47 didn't. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. And that's really all there is to say on it. There's not much more left. Um, going up the list, we'll, we'll just go with Seyfel SO4 because she has it here. Seyfel SO4 is an ale yeast. Now, there's also SO5, which we did try once. It's another ale yeast. One's American, one's English. I think SO4 is the English, and SO5 is the American. As far as what difference there was between the two, I couldn't tell you. I honestly thought they were pretty much the same in actual usage. And it's supposed to be 
it's recommended for clear flavors and low diacetyl. What that means is it doesn't produce as much of the off alcohols that you might not want for things like that. It is a lower alcohol tolerance. It's only 10%. I've seen it go to 11 and 12. I've also seen it only go to eight and nine. So, you know, for certain things, it's great. I like to use it when I'm making a beer or like ginger beer or ciders, things like that, that I don't want to be high. Or if I want to make something like that with a lower ABV, that's also sweet. I believe my apple wine that we tasted on camera a couple months ago now um, was actually made with SO4 and it was like 9%, a little bit sweet. We pasteurized it. It was wonderful, fantastic apple wine. Um, they're saying here medium to high flocculation. Okay. Um, fast rate of fermentation. It's a lower ABV. I'm not surprised at that really. Um, all right. They do talk about temperature range. This is 15 to 20 Celsius or 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I honestly never let the house get that cold. Like Derek would kill me. It just, we typically stay between 70 and 75 most of the time. I would say under the desk where we keep things, it's probably 72 pretty consistently. Not a lot of drafts there, that kind of thing. That's why I use it. Um, but basically, SO4 is a great yeast. We've used it many, many times. Um, I, I still have a little bit of it. We don't use it as much as we used to. Oh, wait. All right. And then this is a Lalvin yeast strain selection chart. Derek actually found this online and... I'm gonna make an article, a, a companion article for this video that's gonna be on our website. And I'll have all the different charts on there for you so you can have them at your disposal. By the way, our website is city-steading.com and the link is below. So what this is gonna do, we're gonna go through some of these. There is one on here that I've never actually used, the RC212. I'm gonna ignore that and just pretend we don't see that at all. <laughs> Um, so we'll go through D47, and and, and then it's D47, 71B, K1V1116, and EC1118. These yeasts I have a lot of experience with, and I'm going to tell you the advantages and disadvantages, and I'll even do them relative to bread yeast as we go. That's probably the easiest way to go. D47, it's re recommended for premium quality white wines, especially full-bodied, barrel-fermented. Um, I'm going to say D47 is a pretty nice workhorse for wines. It's... A lot of people like it for meads as well. I stopped using it. It used to be our favorite, but yeah. we have a new favorite, and we'll be getting to that soon. Yeah. The reason we stopped using it is I, I, I'm learning that it's much more finicky about temperature changes than some other yeasts are. And because we do keep our house at that temperature, I mean, we're in Florida, I can't always keep it low. But it does say the temperature range is 50 to 95 degrees. Fahrenheit. That's, a, that's yeah, 10 that's to 35 Celsius. That's a wide range. Our house is in that range. But I'm finding that it actually doesn't like that. It wants to be either hotter or a lot colder. I'm not willing to do either one of those because, you know, at 85 degrees, I sweat, I melt. You know, I melt. At 50 degrees, Derica shivers and, and freezes. So we found for our uses, it doesn't work. Now, if you live in a really, really hot area or a really cold area, it might work better for you. So I don't want to say it's bad. But for our uses, we stopped using it also because it wasn't getting to that 15% they claim. Um, we almost never had D47 get to 15%. Did we maybe get a bad batch? I don't know. I tend to buy in bulk. I get like 10 or 20 at a time. So I'm probably getting all the same lot at a time. And it is entirely possible that we just had a, a lot that didn't go as high as we want. That actually happened with one other yeast I'll get to here too. It says rate of fermentation is moderate. I'm not going to get into foam production because uh, what difference does that make? It makes foam. <laughs> Flocculation, it says medium. I would say it flocculated really nicely. It did make a nice yeast cake. Never had an issue with any of that. Um, you know, there's other stuff here. They talk about various things that we're not going to get into because we don't do those things. But it's a good yeast. I liked it. The ones that we did with it worked out well. I think the flavors were good. I think it would just always fell a little short of the ABV potential. And that kind of got to me because I like to calculate these things out. And if I don't know, like it says 15% here, but if it can't get to 15%, then eh. um, next one is 71B, also known as 71 Beast. Now they actually have a mistake on here. It says 18% for alcohol tolerance. 71B is not 18%. Ooh, that's a little weird that their own chart has that Yeah, long. this is the official Lovin website. Yeah, yeah, but when you look it up, they're different. Anyhow, um, 
71B is recommended for fruity wines from concentrates. So that means like your juices and things like that. It's made for some of the stuff that we do around here. And it's for the type of wines, rosé, light, young, red. Sure, they're saying young, see? Age stuff, eh. However, we haven't had much of a chance to age anything using 71B yet because we just started using it in the last three or four mm -hmm. months. So I can't say about aged. Um, fermentation temperature range is 59 to 86 Fahrenheit and 15 to 30 Celsius. So it's not quite the same range as D47. It's a little, it wants it a little warmer. I found that our 72 to 75, it seems to really like that. It says alcohol tolerance 18. It's not, it's 14. But we regularly get 15 out of it. So you might as well call it 15. It doesn't really go much higher than that though. Um, rate of fermentation is moderate. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It, it, it's, it's been a reasonable yeah. fermenter. I mean, we give it a few weeks. Flocculation is medium. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, medium flocculation. It, it makes a decent yeast cake. I can't really say it's any worse or better than D47. Probably similar. Those two compared to bread yeast. Because I said I was going to do that. Bread yeast will only get to, in our general usage, about 12%. Some people have said 15 and 16. I've seen 13 once, I think. Flocculation, not good. It makes the wispies. It just, it doesn't ever make a nice yeast cake. It does settle out. It just doesn't compact. Yeah. If you don't rack it multiple times, you may end up with some wispies in the bottom. That They don't hurt you. You don't even taste them. Some people say that they can taste a bready taste in wines made with bread yeast. Now, here's the problem. Bready taste comes from flour, not from yeast. You don't... There's, so how they're getting that, I think it's a psychological thing. I yeah. think they're saying, I made this with bread yeast, therefore it tastes like bread. Well, it's called bread yeast only because it's made to make more CO2 than alcohol. And wine yeast is made to make more alcohol than CO2. Other than that, they're the same thing. So I don't really believe that. I think that's a psychological thing. I've never experienced it myself. I've never had a wine taste bready to me before. Beer... Because, you know, grains, that's yeah. what flour is, yeah. but never a wine. Um, anyway, um, bu, 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 bu. okay, next. K1V11116. Our very first mead video used this yeast. It was uh, Viking blood. And I got it because, like everybody, I wanted 18% ABV and I wanted it to be fruity. <laughs> Okay, I don't like this yeast. <laughs> I'll just say it right now. I don't like it. We've used it a few times. I'm not a big fan. It just, it never seems to come through with the promises to me. It's supposed to be for fruit wines and low nutrient must restart stuck fermentations. Okay, it didn't. We tried that. Yeah. It, it, it didn't do it. Um, could it have just been the must we used it in? Quite possibly. Um, it's types of wines, dry white, rosé, light young red, and ice wine. Sure, I, I guess so. I, I've never really been that impressed with it. Even in the original Viking Blood, when we tried it, I was like, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't great. And I'm not going to blame the yeast fully for that, but the yeast is a part of it. Its temperature range is more... It does have a really wide temperature range. 50 to 107 Fahrenheit and 10 to 42 Celsius. Now, is it possible that if we fermented this at a high temperature that it would work better? Maybe. However, I'm not leaving stuff outside. I'm just not a fan of doing that so um 18 is its alcohol tolerance i don't think we ever had one get to 18 percent using k1b 16 17 maybe but never 18 um supposed to be a very fast fermenter i wouldn't say it's any faster than d47 or 71b in my opinion um low foam production and low flocculation it takes a while to clear it, it stays pretty cloudy for a long time um and then we're on to Champagne yeast, okay? Technically, you can call K1V a champagne yeast, too. We're on to EC1118, which is both loved and hated by brewers. It's one of the more common yeasts that you're ever going to hear about, and every single brew shop in the world will tell you that's the one you should use. Now, there's reasons why they will tell you that. First, it is for white and sparkling wines, ideal for quick fermentations. Think about it, quick fermentations. Dry, dry white, sweet, sparkling ice wine. Wow, that's kind of a wide range, don't you think? And here's its temperature range. 45 to 95 Fahrenheit, 7 to 35 Celsius. 18% tolerance, very fast fermentation. Yes, this one is made to chew through anything. However, I think, much like the D47, we had a bad batch because I bought it in bulk. I'd never really purchased it 
well, not in a long time, so I didn't have any. And we did a test of champagne yeast versus K1V1116. And on a young wine, we liked the EC1118 better. It actually came out better. Now, Paul Allerton, one of our mods for the VIP group, has done the same test, and he found the opposite over time. We haven't given it enough time yet to actually do that taste. I think they're still going. We'll do it eventually. But to me, the, the 1118 was kind of a disappointment because if you look like our Bourbon Moshe and the Black Sack Meads, these ones that got stuck, we tried using it to unstuck. Didn't do a thing. I have yet to see an 1118 brew go past 15%. Just saying. Now, those two versus bread yeast, yeah, they're going to be a little higher for the alcohol, but in my opinion, not a lot. We've only seen them go to about 15%. But you know what this brings me to? Most of the brews that we make that come out great, that actually taste really good, that worked well, that didn't need 50,000 years of aging, were in the 12 to 15% alcohol range. And my experiences with all of those yeasts proves out that all the yeasts that fall within that range all produce great stuff for us. Why is that? Well, because, I'll be honest, we don't add in all the extra stuff to push the yeast beyond their natural potentials. We just don't do it. I'm not going to get into the whole talk about it because everybody knows what we do and what we don't do. We don't add nutrients. We don't add sulfites. We don't add sorbates. We just don't do these things. And all the staggered additions and things like that, they are to help push it beyond what it's naturally going to do. They're natural things. I'd rather just let, let the biotics be biotics. So we found that 12 to 15% range to be the most flavorful, the tastiest, without it being an overpowering alcohol or anything like that. And I mean, let's be honest, at 12%, you have a glass. At 18%, you'd have to have two thirds of that glass to get the same amount. So you know what? Have one and two thirds, one and a third glasses and you got the same. It really, it's not, just not that different. I mean, In other words, you get to drink more. Yeah, you get to have more. I mean, you know, we don't drink to get drunk. We drink because we like the flavor of it. Alcohol is actually a pleasurable experience when you're not plastered. You know, you want to be able to enjoy it. Um, but what we've found is that the yeast that work best for us are, right off the bat, 71B. Absolutely, by far, our favorite yeast for nearly anything. We've made mead. We've made wine. I haven't tried a beer with 71B. I usually use SL4 for beers or bread yeast for beers. Uh, bread yeast is a wonderful yeast all around. We actually did a bread yeast versus D47 test and we preferred the bread yeast. It tasted better. Anything you'd like to add? Now the further discussion about yeasts and how they consume sugars is actually going to be covered in our sugar video. So if you're interested in that, make sure to wait and watch that one as well. But as always guys, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.